Hi, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will see how our body uses protein to build muscle. Well, for a start, to build muscle, our body needs to synthesize more muscle protein than it breaks down. And according to this study published in the Journal of Nutrients, anyone looking to build muscle needs to make sure that they're getting enough protein, as well as making sure that they're putting the work in on the gym floor. Because protein intakes were shown to promote additional gains in lean body mass beyond those observed with resistance exercise alone. So put simply, protein is a micronutrient that is built from amino acids, which are stitched together into long chains. In this video, we're going to explore how we digest and absorb protein to facilitate our muscle growth. To be honest, I actually don't think we give our digestive system enough credit for all the steps that are necessary to break down the protein and then absorb into our bloodstream and then get it into our muscles. So in this video, we're going to go on a little journey through our digestive tract to show what it really takes to get the protein from our mouth to our muscles, which will then help us to understand if it matters what type of protein we ingest and if we have any control of where the protein actually goes in our body. And I will give you some recommendations on when to eat that protein as well as the overall amount. But before we dive into all these, please do me a small favor by hitting the like button and sharing your thoughts or feedback in the comments below. Let's start our video today with the digestion of protein. That is the breaking down of the food into smaller molecules, which can then be absorbed into our bloodstream. We will soon see that certain segments of our digestive tract are primarily for dealing with digestion and other segments with absorption. Well, digestion begins here in our mouth or our oral cavity, mechanically with chewing and chemically with enzymes that are released from our salivary glands. But there is some ability to absorb a few smaller, simpler substances in the mouth, such as sublingual medications or sublingual glucose. But again, digestion is primarily taking place here in the oral cavity through chewing in saliva. Now, in the case of, say, like a protein shake, there is not much chewing going on there because we usually just drink that down. However, if you are eating protein-rich foods like chicken or steak, you will be doing more chewing or mechanical digestion. But in either example, we will take that food from the oral cavity and swallow it down the esophagus and then into our stomach. Well, the inside lining of the stomach is called the tunica mucosa, and you can see these awesome folds called the gastric rugi, which allows the stomach to stretch when you fill it up with food. In these tunica mucosa, there are various cells that secrete mucus to protect the stomach. Other cells called the parietal cells will secrete hydrochloric acid that will kill pathogens and also denature proteins, which is part of this process of digesting that protein we have just ingested. Other cells in the tunica mucosa of the stomach, called chief cells, secrete pepsinogen. And once the pepsinogen comes into contact with the hydrochloric acid, it gets converted into its active form of pepsin, an enzyme that also breaks down the proteins that we have just ingested. So based on this, both the hydrochloric acid and the pepsin are responsible for denaturing and breaking down the proteins. So we can see that the stomach is still primarily participating in digestion, chemically through the use of acid and enzymes, and mechanically digesting by churning and mixing that food all together. With the stomach juices, we call it calm. Now again, like the mouth, something can be absorbed through the stomach, such as certain medications, even a little alcohol and fluids. But primarily, we're dealing with digestion here, and the protein still needs to move further downstream before it can be absorbed. Here, at the end of the stomach, there's this really important sphincter called the pyloric sphincter. It regulates how much food can move out of the stomach and into the small intestine. And how long it takes for the food to move from the stomach into the small intestine through this sphincter is dependent on the amount and the type of food that you have ingested. In general, really fatty foods will take longer to break down in the stomach and therefore takes longer to pass into the small intestine. Whereas a very simple protein powder like whey protein, or if you ingest it with a few simple carbohydrates that can go through this initial process of digestion fairly quickly, and will move from the stomach and into the small intestine in a short amount of time. Now, once we're in the small intestine, we're going to find that it is divided into three different segments, the duodenum, jejunum, and the ileum. Now, the duodenum connects with the common bile duct 
which receives bile from the liver and the gallbladder, as well as secretions from the pancreas, which includes bicarbonate as well as pancreatic enzymes. The bile is used to break down fats, which we aren't quite as focused on in this video because we're focusing on protein. And the bicarbonate from the pancreas helps to neutralize the excess mixture that are coming from the stomach. But the pancreas release several enzymes that will further break down and digest protein. So the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, we're still breaking down and digesting the protein. But after these final stages of digestion in the duodenum, we can now finally start to absorb. So when it comes to absorption of digested protein and getting those to our muscles, we need to first understand the distinction between proteins, peptides and amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks and you bond or string together some amino acids and you create a peptide. You could create a dipeptide, which is two amino acids strung together, or a tripeptide, which would be three amino acids strung together, all the way up to amino acids strung together, creating large peptides called polypeptides. And then these polypeptides get folded and orientated in specific shapes, and you can build a full protein. So pretty much you can go from amino acid to peptide to protein. But why would I take the time to explain this? Well, based on what we have talked about so far, you may have already got the idea that you cannot absorb a full protein or even a polypeptide. It first must be broken down into smaller peptides or amino acids before it can even come close to getting absorbed through the small intestine and eventually into the bloodstream. But what we can absorb are very small peptides like dipeptides and tripeptides and individual amino acids. And this is going to be very important in just a moment when we talk about if the type of protein we eat even matters and if we have any control on where these proteins can be distributed throughout our body. The small intestine is the longest part of the digestive tract because it is the main area of absorption and longer means we have more time and length to absorb nutrients. Furthermore, it also has increased surface area due to the tunica mucosa have folds called circular folds. When we zoom in on these circular folds, we would also see that on top of the folds, they would have microvilli, which would further increase the surface areas for absorption. And I need to show you another yellowy tissue called a mesentery. But if you look closely, you can see a ton of blood vessels in there that are going to be absorbing all these nutrients. And in this case, those nutrients are the amino acids that we have been talking about. And here is how this would work. Now the amino acids, dipeptides and tripeptides will move from the lumen, which is the hollow space inside the intestine. And they will move from this lumen and into the cells that are a part of the tunica mucosa. Any dipeptides or tripeptides that are now in these mucosal cells will get broken down further into amino acids. And some of those amino acids won't even leave the mucosal cells because those mucosal cells will use some of those amino acids to construct cellular proteins that they may need for themselves. But the majority of the amino acids that are not incorporated into those cellular proteins will then be moved from the mucosal cells and into the bloodstream and then go directly to the liver, which has a huge role in monitoring the supply of amino acids and dictating which amino acids will be transported to the tissues. And after a protein-containing meal, over 50% of the amino acids absorbed will be found in and utilized by the liver. And then the rest will be released as free amino acids into the systemic circulation and become available for the body tissues, including our skeletal muscles that we may have just worked out. Well, does the type of protein that we ingested even matter? And do we have any control over where the ingested protein ends up within our body? Now let me first answer the second question. Do we have any control where the ingested protein ends up? And the answer is no. Well, let's say we ingested some whey protein or maybe even a collagen supplement as collagen is a protein. We know that we can't absorb either one of those until it gets broken down or digested into amino acids. So we simply can't tell our body that amino acids are to be earmarked for my biceps and that is the only place they can go or the amino acids that makes up this collagen are to be earmarked for my skin of my face, and that is the only place they can go. No, our body doesn't care where we want those amino acids to go. We even saw that when amino acids were absorbed into the mucosal cells of the small intestine, some of those get taken and utilized by those cells, and then all the rest 
first go to the liver, and then the liver utilizes over 50% of those amino acids to create plasma proteins and other proteins that are important to the functioning of the human body, and may even use some of those for energy. And then the rest can be utilized for other tissues like muscles, skin, tendons, and ligaments. So what this means is that if you are most concerned with muscle growth and protein synthesis, the most important thing to do is to eat enough protein so that there is enough amino acids available to circulate and be utilized by your muscles and other tissues. And this is where you can get into something that is known as nitrogen balance. This is the differences between total nitrogen intake and total nitrogen loss. And nitrogen intake comes from protein intake and nitrogen loss comes from the breakdown of proteins throughout the body. So when the intake is equal to loss, a state of nitrogen balance exists. When intake is greater than loss, a person is in positive nitrogen balance. But when loss is greater than intake, this would result in a negative nitrogen balance. And nitrogen balance is fluctuating throughout the day. Exercise and feeding obviously play a role in this. But again, overall, you want to try to be in a positive nitrogen balance in order to consistently build muscle. Now finally, does the type of protein you eat even matter? Well, that depends on a few variables. Often you hear about whey and casein as some of the main protein powders that are available for supplementation. And these are derived from milk, which means that they are animal proteins. Animal proteins are termed as complete proteins because they contain all the indispensable amino acids in the proper amounts and proportions, which would prevent amino acid deficiencies. So by comparison, plant proteins may lack one or more of the indispensable amino acids or the proper concentration and are therefore sometimes referred to as incomplete proteins. Now this does not mean that someone that is a vegan or vegetarian can't get all the indispensable amino acids, they just need to get them from multiple sources. So indispensable amino acids are amino acids that must be provided by the diet because the body cannot synthesize them on its own and these are also known as essential amino acids. And something else to consider about the type of protein that you ingest is how fast it can be digested and absorbed. Whey protein, for example, is known to be broken down and absorbed quickly. So wouldn't this also mean that the type of protein you ingest is important? Well, in certain situations, yes, but let me go back to something I said earlier. First, the most important thing you can do is to ingest enough protein getting in positive nitrogen balance. It is actually more important to eat enough protein in a 24 hour period than it is to worry about the exact timing, the rate of absorption, and making sure you get that whey protein shakes right after your exercise. And how much protein depends on various factors and can range anywhere from one to two to two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, depending on your goals. But once we get to that optimal amount of protein during a 24 hour period, then yeah, if you are concerned about recovering as quickly as possible, let's start looking at optimizing the timing of protein ingestion and might as well get the potential benefits of ingesting the fast absorbing protein right after a workout to help start reversing the catabolic state of those recently exercised muscles and may as well also start replenishing your glycogen stores while you're at it by mixing some of that protein with some carbohydrates. So hopefully in this video, you learn some cool information about how our bodies digest, absorb and utilize proteins. So until next week, take care. Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge, but will help the channel to grow. If you're interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.